Hello again, everybody, and welcome to the rating of my bikes. I've been asked by a few different people to rate my bikes from top to bottom on what I think is my favorite to my least favorite. Uh, it's a personal list. Of course, everybody has their own tastes. But I figured I would come up with a way to rate the bikes, and I came up with a uh, a scale that has three different criteria in it. And one is unique, one is speed capable, and one is comfort. So those are the three different things that make up a point system. You get one to ten points for each one of those for a total score. Now you'll notice I do not have the ruckus in the garage. I'm going to include that also in this because I just recently sold it. So it wouldn't be fair not to have that bike be part of this. Now, I'm going to start off at the lowest bike on the scale and then work my way up to number one. <clears throat> um, number seven, I actually gave the ruckus. <laughs> kind of funny, it's not in my garage anymore. It was very easy for me to sell that bike. I was not, um, I wasn't one of those people who wanted to take it all apart and upgrade it and do all that stuff. I, that wasn't for me. I had a good time fixing it up, but... At the end of the day, as far as it being unique, it's very ununique. I gave it a 4 for uniqueness out of 10 because they made so many of them. They're still making them. And now you can get them in gray or blue. So there you go. Thank you very much, Honda, for uh, <laughs> doing something different with the Ruckus. Even this year, they didn't do anything but change the color. So I gave it a 4 for uniqueness. Speed capable, I gave it a 5 out of 10. It's not a very fast bike at all. Uh, again, at a stock uh, setup, it, it does 40 miles an hour. It's a motorcycle in the state of Texas where I live. And to have it only do 40, you are basically not able to go very far with it, you know, as far as places that have a high mile per hour range. So I gave it a 5 for that, and I actually gave it a 5 for comfort. And that was the worst grade out of all these bikes was... The ruckus because it is the least comfortable out of everything you see here now you may be comfortable on it but again put things into my perspective and sit on the rest of these bikes and then ride the ruckus and i think you might feel a bit different so i gave that a total of 14 points out of 30. number six the elite 50 pink which is right there that one I gave a unique grade of 8, just because they didn't make a whole lot of them. They only made them for a few years. So, and then the pink wasn't the one that they made the most of, so I figured it deserved a high rating in the unique portion. Speed capable, I gave it a 5 again. It, it, it is rated a moped, which is good because it does 35 miles an hour. So, at least you can put a moped tag on that. It doesn't change that. Uh, you still got to insure it. You still got to plate it in Texas. So, again, only a five there. And I gave it a seven for comfort because it actually does have a pretty comfortable seat. You see there, the seat is a good size. And if you're a smaller rider, it's definitely comfortable. And even for me, it was more comfortable than the Ruckus. So you put those three scores together, together and you get a 20. Number five on my list is the PCX. Now, the PCX for uniqueness, it got a five. Again, there's a million of these everywhere. All they did was change the display, and the bike pretty much looks the same. And nothing's really changed on it. A wannabe, you know, bike that it's not. You know, that, that's the problem that I have with the PCX, is, and I have in general with all three of the big manufacturers, is they all want to make them look like super bikes. Why don't they make them look like scooters? You know, that, that to me is, again, my opinion. But, you know, all of them look the same. You take Honda off this, you take Suzuki off and Yamaha off, and at the end of the day, they all look like they're trying to be a super bike. I really wish there'd be some more innovation and, and, and uniqueness like there was back in the 80s. It's just a shame that they don't see it that way. They make all these bikes 
look like they're something they're not. So again, a five on uniqueness for this. Speed capable, it gets an eight because it definitely it'll go 65 miles an hour. And um, comfort, I gave it an eight as well. So you get 21 points, one point better than that little bitty bike. And that's really because of the uniqueness. Next comes the Elite 50s. Now I had one as a kid, and I also have two sitting right there. And I put the Elite 50 uniqueness at a nine because these were a one year model. Drive fine in these, they're not out there. They're very unique. They did not make them, you know, very many of them. So nine on the unique scale, speed capable, Again, I gave them a six because they are slightly faster than the E model and definitely slightly faster than a Ruckus. So I gave it a six for speed capable and then comfort, I gave these a seven. And um, that was the same grade that I gave the Elite E. And that's because these big seats, these are actually quite comfortable, you know, for short commutes. Honda definitely thought about comfort when they uh, put these bikes together back in the 80s. So between the three scores, a 9, a 6, and a 7, you got 22. So you got one more point than the PCX. Now we're going to move on to the top three. And number three is the Elite 110. This bike really does not get the credit it deserves. It doesn't. And, you know, a lot of folks say, oh, it looks like a Japan or a Chinese bike. And that's a shame because it doesn't. It, it, it actually has slight nod back to the 80s bikes. The only thing I really don't like about it is it was built in China, but at least it was with all of the parts from Honda. Now, as far as the uniqueness, I give it an 8 because it was a one-year model. You could only buy this for one year, and then it was gone here in the U.S. So I thought it deserved an 8 for that. Speed capable, 7. It does 50 miles an hour. So it definitely gets a better grade than the little bikes. So I figured an 8 for unique, a 7 for capable, and comfort. That is one of the most comfortable scooters in the garage. And it gets a 10. If you've ridden on an Elite 110, you would see why. It's like sitting on a couch. I don't know what else you could compare it to. But it's very comfortable. And uh, I'm not sure who the guy was. Somebody uh, made a comment in on my channel and said, Oh, well, the Ruckus is as comfortable as Elite 110. I'm like, no, you've never ridden on an Elite 110. Because if you have, you would see for sure that the Elite 110 definitely is a lot more comfortable. It's not even close. So I should have added storage space also to this criteria, but you know, the bikes back in the 80s, they weren't really looking for storage as much as now. So I didn't really think it would be a fair way to compare the old against the new. So I left that out, but that bike's got a lot of storage. If we were gonna mention it, you know, between the three scores, an eight for being unique because it's a one-year model, a seven for being speed capable, and then 10 for comfort, I gave it a 25. And I thought it deserved a 25. And that came in at number three. Now, we have our top two. And it's funny because they're from two different manufacturers. The little time that I've owned this bike, I've been in incredibly impressed with it. Let me just tell you, as far as being unique, it's a 10. I mean, there is nothing out there like it. If you want to compare it to a Helix, okay, they only made it for three years. They only made, I think, 1,700 of these in the U.S. Definitely on the unique scale, it is at the top because of the way it looks. It looks like nothing else on the road. I really wish that Yamaha gave this bike a little bit better chance than it did and brought it back because it looks better than the bikes that they're making today. At first, I was like, do I like the way it looks? And it grew on me more and more and more. And 
I I can't get enough of it now. I mean, I have to put it at number 10 for uniqueness. Speed capable, I put it at a number 9. You know, the only way you were going to get a number 10 or get a 10 on my scale for speed is if you could hit 90 miles an hour or more. And this bike doesn't do that. It'll hit 75, 80. So a 9 is what it got for the speed capability. And it also got a 9 for comfort. The seat is incredibly comfortable. It really is. You know, it's a nice big seat. And when you're a bigger guy like me, it's it's extremely important. Now, out of the three scores, I gave it a 10, a 9, and a 9 for a total of 28. Now, there's only one bike left. And that is Ruby the Elite. What my channel is about. And it's this bike. And again, with Unique, I gave it a 10. These are when Honda was at its best for innovation. You know, to me, there's nothing like this. And if they had half a clue today, they would stop making stuff that looks like this and go back and start making some stuff that looks like this and all the features that this thing has. You know, it, it, it's not even close. Because if it came to it and you said, you know, which bike are you going to keep, this one or that one, I, I wouldn't even think twice. And I don't care what one is worth more. This one is so unique, and that's why I like that one as well. They're unique. You can't just find them on the street anywhere and in the condition I have them in. You don't find anything on the road that looks like them. And that's why the 10 was given for both. Now, this one only got an 8 for speed capability. It's definitely not as fast as the Morphous. But this bike does do 60 miles an hour. So, I had to give it an 8. Comfort, though, I gave it a 10. The bike seat on this is so comfortable. It is, you know, when you ride it around, you, you, you definitely don't get tired of sitting. And in incredibly, incredibly comfortable. So where does that put us at? So the Elite 125 got a 10, an 8, and also a 10 for a score of 28. So maybe to a lot of your surprise, my two favorite bikes in my garage are the 2007 Yamaha Morphous and the 1984 Honda Elite 125. And those are the two bikes I probably will keep. Well, I probably will keep this one here as well. The one that's in the back there. Which I got a cool thing I'm going to share with you what I'm going to do on that bike. That's another video. And uh, this one's actually currently for sale. So if you go on Facebook Marketplace, you will see this bike. And... Um, I have no connection really with this one. I, I want to at least keep one of the two. And that was the first one I had. And that's the S model. So that's why I'm going to keep that one. But that's my list. So again, we started out with the Ruckus, which is no longer in my garage. And I know I'm going to hear heat for that one. There's a few of you guys who are just all about the Ruckus and, you know, all the power to you. I really wish you'd ride some other bikes and get another perspective. And then you would see that uh, there, there is a lot more comfortable, better bikes out there than that one. And a lot more unique ones. And if that, that is something that's important to you, like it is to me, you know, I like to ride around on something nobody has. I mean, that's fun taking this around the block. Or fun taking that around the block as soon as I'm done with it. I'm still working on it, folks. Um, but it's fun to drive these around because you get second looks. Or people are like, what the hell is he riding? And they don't even know what it is, which is really, really neat when you get that uh, feeling. That bike over there is nostalgic to me just because I had one as a kid. So that's why that one's so, you know, it, 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 it's something real special to me. But going through the list, the Ruckus came in last. The pink little bike here came in sixth. The PCX 150 
came in fifth. The Elite 50s, those two, came in fourth. The Elite 110 back there, that came in third. And then tied for first are the Morphous and the Elite 125. So I really am looking forward to the comments from you all. Please tell me what you feel. Tell me I'm wrong or tell me you agree. I don't care either way. Um, but it's just fun to see what you guys think. You know, you guys have been with me. Everybody who watches my channel, you see me do something on each one of these bikes, including the Ruckus that isn't here. And um, it's been a fun ride so far, but we're going to need to change up the garage and, and do a few different things. But I wanted to see what your perspective is. Tell me what bike you think should be on top and what one should be on the bottom. It's just, uh, it was a cool thing to put together, the list. And at the end of the day, it was, it's not a big deal. It's all opinion, folks. But uh, if you like my channel, please subscribe. Hit that notification button. I got a cool video coming up real soon on that bike there. I have not started it. But I have a, uh, a Honda Line accessory that I found for it and uh, found it in the box and it's going to be on that bike and that's going to be cool to add it to so that's going to be coming up soon i still got to finish you up in the background there and ran into a small snag on that bike that i'm going to share also in another video and that's going to be coming up soon so this is kind of you seeing my whole garage hopefully it doesn't look too dirty for you but it's raining pretty hard out tonight and i figured i'm doing something special here today so that'll do it. Um, like I said, subscribe, hit the notification button. Give me a thumbs up if you get an opportunity, you know, or a thumbs down, whatever your prerogative is. I don't care either way. And that's going to do it. I'll see you guys all soon.